In previous videos, we postulated that in order to solve any continuum mechanics problem of a solid with an arbitrary shape, with loadings in all directions, with body forces that can vary as a function of space, and with boundary conditions that also can vary, we need three equations. These are the equilibrium equations, also known as the Cauchy's equations, the kinematic equations, and the constitutive equations. Well, we already have the equilibrium equations, and now we also have the kinematic equations and the constitutive equations. So we have everything we need in order to solve such arbitrary problem. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the theory of small strains for the kinematic equations and the theory of linear isotropic elasticity and we're going to combine that with the equilibrium equations and what you are going to find out is an equation like the one you see here, 3.40. This is called the Navier's equation of elasticity in which the unknown or the value to solve is the displacement u. And notice that this is a vector. In this equation, we also see that there are some parameters. These are lambda and g. These are the Lamé parameters, which depend on Young modulus and Poisson ratio. And we also see that we have density of the material and the vector of acceleration. Here is, uh, again, the three equations that we need. And these three equations, the combination of those, are going to allow us to solve any arbitrary problem like the one I have in this figure. Like, for example, if you wanted to solve what is the state of stress in a reservoir, which is a fracture with multiple stages, bound by layers of different properties, subjective to stresses in different directions which are now the same, then these are all the equations that we're going to have to solve. And the solution or the final equation that uh, summarizes all of these is the Navier equation. Okay, I'm not going to show step by step uh, how to s get to this Navier equation, but again, it's just combining these equations, one, two, and three, and putting everything as a function of displacement, and then you can find uh, how to get to this equation. Notice that here you have a sigma, but the sigmas are a function of strains. So here you're going to have a function of a strain, but the strains are a function of displacements. So at the end of the day, you're going to find that this equation, it can be written as a function of displacement. All right. So uh, as I was saying, I I'm not going to detail about how to solve this equation, but at least I'd like to explain what it means. And to have a, if it could be called a proof by analogy or, or just to show that uh, what, what it means and what are all these uh uh, functions or operators that probably is the first time that you see them, these inverted triangles. You might be asking yourself, what are those triangles? Okay, well, these triangles are operators that mean derivatives. And let's just hold on a little bit on this and we'll go to our analogy. So let me bring this equation here to the left. And we'll still keep an eye on the equation, but we'll look at this other solution that I have here in my uh, notes. And the comparison I'm going to do is a comparison with fluid flow. Uh, probably if you are a petroleum engineering student, this, in a, this is an equation that you know a lot better. In fluid flow, what uh, we do in order to solve a fluid flow problem under steady state conditions is that we use the mass conservation equation which tell us that the uh, summation of the derivatives of the flow rates in a three-dimensional space 
with respect to the derivatives in space has to be equal to zero. In physical terms, this means everything that gets in has to get out. Unless there is a change uh, with compressibility that here we're not including because we're just making this uh, very simple. So if this is incompressible, then everything that gets in has to get out. This is mass conservation. And it's similar to our equilibrium equation because equilibrium equation is momentum conservation. And notice that similarly to the mass conservation, we have a derivative of the stress tensor with respect to space, uh, which is ensuring this momentum conservation. And in this case, it's mass conservation. Okay, second, we can also use Darcy's law in fluid flow. And Darcy's law is actually a constitutive equation. It's a property of the porous medium that tells us that the flow rates are proportional to permeability, inversionally proportional to fluid viscosity, and proportional to the gradients of pressure depending in which direction I am measuring this flow rate, direction one, two, or three, then I have to consider the gradient in direction one, two, or three. Now I can combine the mass conservation equation and the Darcy's law, which is a constitutive, constitutive equation. In our case, in mechanics, the constitutive equation was linear elasticity, also a property of the material. So if I combine one and two, uh, if Q1, I get it from Darcy's law equal to uh, minus permeability by viscosity times the gradient in direction one, this is what they have right here. And if I do the same for Q2 and for Q3, I get to this equation I have right here. And if I further consider that permeability and viscosity are constant throughout the space, I can take this out of this uh, derivative and actually and further I now I can take derivative two times and that's going to be a, a second derivative and, and this is the equation I'm going to get. It's a second derivative of pressure with respect to space and considering the non-trivial case in which I do not have a permeability which is uh, equal to zero, then in order to guarantee this equality to be equal to zero, all of this has to be equal uh, to zero. And all of this can be simplified into this triangle, which is called the Laplacian operator. And this triangle with, uh, it's actually uh, the Greek letter nabla and uh, squared. Uh, this is the Laplacian operator, and the Laplacian operator applied on pressure has to be equal to zero, which is equal to what I have over here, just in a more compact version. And it is exactly the same with the Navier equation for elasticity. Now you see there is a similar triangle over here, or and now we know this is the Laplacian operator, and we have a few more that also have uh, uh, gradients and divergence operators of the, uh, the vector field, but at the end of the day, I get an equation that has material parameters, derivatives with respect to space, and the unknown to solve, which in mechanics is displacement and uh, opposed to the case of fluid flow in which it is pressure. So, now that we know what this equation means, then uh, you can find a solution for this equation. This is a, a differential uh, equation and it needs uh, initial conditions, boundary conditions, uh, similar to what I have over here. And uh, it can also be uh, solved as a function of time if you add the time component. And this is what we're going to have to do. Uh, and the equation that we're going to have to solve in order to solve the stresses, for example, around wellbores, around fractures, and in any arbitrary case of continuum mechanics.